Welcome. We are going to be talking about the rotational inertia of a disc with non-uniform mass density. How do you calculate the rotational inertia of that disc if it has non-uniform mass density? So uh, let's take a look at what I'm referring to. So if we have a disc like this, a solid disc, but the mass for this disc, it, there's much more mass on the rim of the disc on the edges of this than there is inside. In fact, um, let's call, we're gonna use a term sigma. This is a lowercase sigma here. This little curly Q, this is a circle with a little curly Q. That's sigma is surface area mass density. So that's the mass per area for a given, like that's how much mass you have per area for a given area. So that's sigma. And we're just making this up. I, for this problem, I'm choosing a very simple relationship between sigma and how far out you go. So um, C is a positive constant, and R is going to be how far from the center you are. So um, if you put a zero in for R, that puts you at the center, and then when you multiply zero times C, you get um, that the mass density is zero. So there's no mass at the center. And then as you go out, the mass density gets greater and greater, and it gets greater by a lot because of the squared term. Okay. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a ring and I'm going to find the rotational inertia of just this ring here. And um, so that's going to be a very thin ring. So I'm going to, it's dr thin, but it's got a radius of little r. Now that's, um, that little r is a variable. It's going to, as you go out, it's going to um, get bigger and bigger and bigger. But just the, um, the eye of the ring, I'm going to put... Um, the, it's going to be a di because it's a really tiny rotational inertia. So the di of the ring, just the ring, is going to be whatever the mass of the ring is. The dm of the ring. It's going to be that times how far it is from the um, axis. So this is rotating about this axis. This is my axis for this um, rotational inertia. So it's dm times r squared. And that's just working off the equation that um, the I, the rotational inertia of a point mass, is just d. It's just the mass times how far it is away from the axis squared. Okay. So, um, but I don't want to know just the rotational inertia of the ring. I want it for the entire disk. So, the I for the disk is just going to be the summation of all these. So it's going to be summing up all the dm's of each ring times r squared. Now um, you notice that my variable is r squared is r but my differential is in terms of dm. So um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this equation dm over da is that's the um, that's equal to c r squared. So this is for any problem, but this is particular to our problem. I just made up that sigma for this problem was cr squared. Okay, so I'm going to set those two equal to each other, dm over da. That's the, the um, surface area mass density. That's equal to c over r squared. Okay, so now um, there's, a, there's one thing that's a little tricky here, and that is that dA, the mass is this mass, this shaded in mass. It's very tiny. And the dA is this area. So it's this area of this ring. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this ring, and I'm going to roll it out. And I want you to see something when I roll that out. So if I cut that ring and I roll it out, it's going to look like this maybe. It's going to have um, a length, when I cut it and roll it out, it's going to have a length of 2 pi little r. And it's going to have a, a height, a thickness of dr. So that little area, dA, that little area is just 2 pi r times dr. That's what that little area is. It's just the, the height times the width. So I'm going to say that, um, I'm going to say that dm over dA, but dA is 2 pi r dr. That's equal to um, cr squared. 
Let me bring this the the um, stuff in the denominator to to the other side. So dm is equal to c r squared times two pi r dr. Okay, perfect because that's going to allow me now to take that dm and turn it into um, something that has a dr in it because I need that my, my variable and my differential to be of the same um, variable. Okay, so here it goes. I'm going to go ahead and um, I think I'm going to go to another sheet of paper now. So I'm going to bring these over here. And I'm going to put in for dm in this, in this um, integral, I'm going to put in um, this for dm. So the i of the disk is equal to the integral of dm, but that's going to be cr squared 2 pi r dr times um, r squared. And I'm going to go from, um, I'm going to integrate, I'm going to tell it to start adding it um, r equals 0, and don't stop adding till you get to little r equals capital R. So I'm going to say r equals 0 to capital R. All right. So uh, let me pull out some of the constants and put the r's together. And so i for this disk is going to be, let's see, I'm going to pull out the 2 pi c out of that integral, 2 pi c. And then my I get r squared times another r to the first power times an r squared. So that's r to the fifth power. So that's the integral from 0 to r of r to the fifth power dr. All right. Let's take the integral now. So i is going to be equal to 2 pi c. c just a constant. It's just a constant, remember. And so this is going to be... Um, r to the fifth, so that's going to be one sixth r to the sixth, and then I'm going to put the limits of integration going to be from zero to capital R. Okay, let's put in the r first, and then when we put in the the zero, it the whole term is going to disappear. So I'm going to get that i is equal to two pi c, And then this is going to be um, r to the 6th over 6 minus, when I put in the 0, I get 0. Okay, and just one more step just to make that look a little better. So i is going to be equal to, okay, so that's going to go down to 1 third. So it's going to be uh, pi times c times r to the 6th capital R to the 6th over 3. And that's my rotational inertia for that disk. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.